Hey you guys, it's Mara Sievers, creator of Pilates Encyclopedia, and I want to show you today how the Pilates Encyclopedia membership can help a Pilates teacher to go from form to function. So you might have heard the term form and function. I like to say from form to function because usually when you go through your teacher training program, what you learn is the this is how the movement looks this is how it works you reach one leg you bring it in you learn a breathing pattern for it right you learn some variations and regressions and progressions so you you learn the general form which body part goes where at what time and then um the the transition that a teacher has to make from being a good teacher to being a great and outstanding and really sought after teacher is where you start to teach function instead of just the form. The form is always the first thing and it's totally fine if that's where you're at. It's a big step already and there's a lot to learn in Pilates and you always have to start with form. With every new student that comes in, they first have to learn the form. They first have to know what am I doing in general. And then once they understand the general form, then we can layer on and not just layering on in terms of level of difficulty, but actually layering on in terms of triggering the muscles that are maybe sleeping, right? The muscles that are not working efficiently, bringing those out instead of continuing to stay in our compensation patterns, right? So that movement becomes more efficient, um, and just better all over. We, we balance out muscles. We don't overuse muscles that are already strong, but instead we, we strengthen muscles that um, have not worked in quite a while. And that's tricky, right? That can sometimes be really, really tricky. Um, so I want to show you right now um, the improvements that we're making to the Pilates Encyclopedia. First of all, um, whenever you're watching this, uh, we are just starting with it now to update that a little bit. So it's not not, not everything is there all the time, uh, but we're working on it. And if you're watching this in half a year or a year, then hopefully we're um, we're done and we've we've uh, completed all of the the chapters. So um, I want to start here, actually, in the library. So when you first log into uh, the Pilates Encyclopedia library, this is what it looks like, and then you have your chapters. Um, and I'm gonna move, scroll down to. So first, you have all the um, pieces of equipment and the what you would consider the encyclopedia of exercises. And then I'm gonna scroll down to the Pilates protocols chapter, and I'm gonna click on that. And then um, there are three sub chapters or categories, and we're going to look at the one uh, concern called uh, improve your movement skills. So if I click on that, you'll see that it has, um, you know, movement skills, like I call them, like spine rotation, um, lumbar flexion, thoracic flexion, so on and so forth. And I want to start us out with ankle stability and mobility. So um, what we're doing is we're really going in depth about each of these movements so that you can start to think about more which joint is doing which movement, which muscles are responsible for the movement around that joint. And then once you have that, you can uh, implement it in every single Pilates exercise. So you don't have to learn every single muscle for every single exercise. That would be endless, right? But you just learn the body part and the joint and the muscles around it. And then you use that information in the exercise that you want to teach. So first we're explaining, um, you know, what are the movements of the foot and the ankle? What does that, uh, what is inversion called sort of in lay terms, right? Um, first of all, for you to understand, but also to communicate it to your student because your student might not know what inversion or supination means. Right? Um, and then we're listing all of the muscles that are responsible for each of these movements. So here it's a little bit micromanaged, right? Like usually this is not, you're not, you're not talking to your student, you're not telling your student you need to engage your extensor hallucinations 
Lucy's long dress. You're not going to do that. But um, if there is, this is always super helpful if there is a problem with something. Like if your client can't do something, like truly cannot do what you're asking them to do, then this is what you're going to start to have to look into to dig deeper and find out maybe there's a problem with one of these muscles and maybe you collaborate with somebody in the medical community, whether that's a doctor or a physical therapist, and then that might be helpful information. Um, and then we're explaining uh, what, what correct alignment should be as far as we can tell. Sometimes that's a little bit hard to say, but, um, uh, in standing or, you know, in, in different positions, what it should look like. And I guess the common mistakes. And then we also add cues for this particular movement. So this is so great because once you have a number of cues, verbal cues for plantar flexion, you can use it in every single exercise and you don't have to learn the verbal cue for this exercise, but you know, okay, I, I should point my toes, I should plant a flex, so these are the cues I have available to me. And then you can mix and match. We have some tactile cues, self-tactile cues, and then we have the list of exercises. So if you just want to look up, oh, I just need an exercise to improve my plantar flexion, then you go through the list and you see, oh, which one haven't you done in a while, right? We organize it by different planes of movement because obviously, um, just working on an ankle, there's different planes of movement. So you want to definitely look at all 360 degrees of the movement. So that's that. And then actually, let me just quickly show you the same thing for hip flexion. So that's in the same chapter, uh, Pilates protocols uh, in the lower extremities category and here for hip flexion. So same thing, we have the muscles responsible for hip flexion. So again, hip flexion only happens on the sagittal plane. So now we're limiting it a little bit. Ankle is a little bit simpler maybe, so we, we combined it, but here it's really just um, hip flexion. Uh, we also include how to assess hip flexion. Like if you want to see does your client have good hip flexion or not? Do you, is that something you should work on? Sometimes we don't know. So this is how you can do it. And then uh, your, your cues, your verbal cues for it, and then the list of exercises, right? So then when you uh, look up a specific exercise, and I've pulled up here in the mat encyclopedia double leg kicks, that's often an exercise that's like hard to teach, right? There's a lot going on and it's, it's often hard to analyze. Um, so again, I encourage you when you do that, and this is, might be um, time for another video for another lesson, but when you just look at the exercise, you can already see what positions are the joints in, and that will help you figure out which muscles are working. So the feet in this picture, and I know it's behind the, the play button here, but the feet are dorsiflexed in this position, but then you change, right, between point of flex. So there's dorsiflexion and plantar flexion. So you could use the cues that you've learned in the ankle chapter, in the ankle um, post, you can use that in this exercise. So when you're, let's say you're just in double leg kicks and you just want to have, need some ideas, you, you want to get some ideas for double leg kicks of teaching that, then under benefits and purpose at the very top, we're, we started here and I'm going to make it a lot more detailed in the future, um, but it basically what it does. So definitely when you lift up, right? When you reach back with your arms, you go into spine extension. So then when you click here, this is linked back and it'll bring you back to the protocols chapter. And then you'll see exactly how to improve spinal extension. So it'll all be cross-linked. And um, instead of listing every single muscle that's involved in a complicated exercise like double leg kicks, this is such a good example because it goes from extension into back into neutral, the knees are being um, flex, right? And extended. So it's, there's so much going on. It would be totally, um, it would be way too much to list all of that here. Um, and I also don't want to list just one part of the exercise because the exercise does a lot more than just one goal, right? Um, so this way I can give you all the information that you want, but still have it sort of um, concise, in, in some degree, right? So again, if you want to, um, if you want to find more exercises that are similar to this, uh, you can look into the width across your chest um, chapter because, or uh, post, because it'll teach you other exercises 
where you open there. And maybe you can do those exercises before you do the double leg kicks or in addition, just to improve that, right? When you, let's say you work, have been working with a class or a student for a long time, the same thing and they're not making progress. Maybe just try some of the similar exercises to see if that might help. Um, talking about this, if you need ideas of, oh, how, how am I gonna get this person or this class to, to get better at a certain movement that's just hard for them, then I encourage you to scroll all the way down to the bottom and then here under related repertoire, you'll find more exercises that have similar goals. So there, sometimes it's a little bit far out, but let's say rocking, right? Rocking is very similar to double leg kicks. It's harder, but it's similar. A single leg kicks is very similar. And one, you know, you kick one leg instead of two, two legs, um, prone double leg lift and so on and so forth. So always use this list um, to, to help you with your sequencing, uh, but also with troubleshooting again, if you have a client and they, um, they they don't seem to make progress as well as you want them to with an exercise, this is really, really helpful. So I hope um, this is ex as exciting for you as it is for me. <laughs> Uh, I'm, I'm super excited to be able to help you make the transition from form to function um, because that's really where the power of Pilates is, in my opinion, when we start to teach somebody how to move. We don't just teach them an exercise, but we teach them movement um, and so that they feel better in real life, right? Okay, uh, if you have any questions, always um, post your questions. Subscribe to the channel if you're watching this on YouTube. I'd be more than happy, you know, I would love for you to, to sign up for the membership, for the Pilates Encyclopedia membership. Um, you find the link below in the description. And if you ever need anything regarding teaching Pilates, come on over, uh, leave me a comment, and I'll always be happy to help you out and uh, to give you some advice. Take care, guys.